Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Well it's fair to say that the race for the best thermal rifle scope has well and truly started and there's a new runner in that race, a company called Thermtech and they have been in touch with me recently and asked if I would be kind enough to do a review on a couple of scopes that they've lent to me. So I've got in front of me the Thermtech Ares 335 and the Ares 660. Now the 660 is a unique scope in the fact that it's a dual lens scope. So you've got a 20 mil lens on there that gives you a wide, wide field of view and also a 60 mil. So those really good close up shots. So a bit more on that in a minute. Uh, let's have a look inside the box with the 335 uh, only because the 660 is already mounted on my gun. So we'll have a look at the box and see what's in there. Well, before I go to opening the box and showing you the contents, I just thought it was a good time now to show you both of the scopes side by side. So the one in my hand is the 335. This is the junior of the three scopes. And the one currently mounted in a very attractive bronze color is the 660 on my rifle. So both scopes operate in exactly the same manner. All the controls are exactly the same. However, this one, has got some magic at the front. This is where the magic takes place. This end ring only rotates a small amount, but that small amount will change this scope from a 20 mil lens right up to a 60 mil lens. And it's as simple as twisting that collar. I would tend to put one of those break off uh, arms on there just for a bit of leverage. So how does this work? Well, on the 20 mil lens, you will see a huge field of view. You've also got picture in picture, which will work exactly the same. So the picture in picture on both lenses, the 20 mil and the big 60 mil will zoom up only on that control. So your small picture in picture is the only part of that image that will zoom up when you turn that control knob. All of these scopes do not have an automatic refresh function. So you don't get that annoying break in the picture. I know on some of the scopes now uh, on the firmware updates, they will give you a warning when it's about to happen. This one, you don't get a warning. They're relying on you to make your own decision on when that screen needs refreshing. And it's as simple as this. You'll obviously have your scope cover open whilst you're using the rifle. If you do notice the picture starting to degrade, simply close the cover up. Two presses on the end of that control cap, you will then get notification in the screen asking you to ensure that lens cover is closed. Press the button once more to confirm it is. It will then go through a refresh and tell you that the refresh is finished. That process will take about two and a half seconds. No different to a conventional scope with an automatic refresh. As soon as it's refreshed, just pop that scope cover back open and off you go. This scope cover, when I had the scope, was up in the vertical position, but I've moved it around to that side purely because my right hand is the hand that does all the controlling. So that being hanging up there above it was just getting in the way. So I can now quite freely get to that 20 mil to 60 mil control lens and also my focus control. So that's the scopes in a nutshell. Right, let's go back now to uh, opening this box and seeing what else comes in the soft case with this scope. So let's have a look and see what comes inside the box. So the scope's there. The scope does come with a very substantial set of mounts with the three screw holes on each side. So it's a six screw cap on the scope mount. It also comes with two battery caps. Now the reason it comes with two battery caps is because this scope is quite clever. It will run on two different types of battery. 18650 and the 18500 will run exactly the same on these scopes. So they've thought of everything. If you run out of one battery and you've got another one, just drop it in there. The other really useful piece of uh, technology on this, this scope does not mind which way you put that battery in. So. Uh, they're thinking about people going out in the winter with uh, gloves on, can't feel the ends of the fingers, can't feel which end of that battery is positive, which end is negative. doesn't matter. Just drop it in. It will run. So let's get this out of the box and have a look and see what it looks like in the open. 
So here is the Thermtech Ares 335. It's the baby of the bunch. Um, I've got this one and I've also got the 660 to try out. So it looks like a conventional day scope as most of the scopes do now and mounts on normal 30 mil rings. This scope and all, all the scopes come with a very substantial set of rings, but I prefer to use a set of quick release mounts that will turn to zero. So I've got some that will come in so I can swap these over and therefore use the different scopes on different rifles. So let's go to the back end first. You've got a removable magnetically mounted rubber eye cap. If you choose to use that, then it's there. The magnet is really strong and it won't fall off and you won't drop it and lose it. So great. Main control is controlled here by three switches. So the main front crescent shaped switch is your main power and the unit powers up really quickly by just a quick press on that button. Once the unit's powered up, another quick press will put it into standby mode, so you're not gonna have the screen running all the time to run that battery down, all batteries. The right-hand side of the control is another multi-function button. It will, one quick press will take a still photograph, press and hold, it will do video and audio, and it will also, with two quick presses, do the picture-in-picture -picture mode if the scope has that function on it. So a really well thought out piece of uh, kit. The buttons are easy to find because there's a solid metal bar between each button. And the left hand button of those three is the one that you will press quickly to change your color palettes. You can, however, go into the menu and change it on there, but it's a long drawn out method. Just press the button there quickly and there's your choice of color palettes. Just run through the five or six that's on there. Choose the one that you like the best. It's a personal choice. Um, everybody sees things in different ways, so pick the one that you like. Believe me, there's plenty on there to choose from. Moving forward, you've got on this side of the scope is the USB-C, which is covered up with a rubber cap. There's also the microphone in there as well, so very good audio on this, which uh, I was pleased to hear. The main control and the zoom function is on this rotating push joggle button there, so you press and hold will come up with the main menu. Uh, you can then short press and rotate up and down to choose that menu that you're actually interested in. Batteries I mentioned earlier, runs on two batteries. There's no internal battery in this, nothing to worry about, about servicing and if that battery goes down and there's an expensive repair cost. So two batteries, it comes with two caps. So you've got the long cap for the ba short, long battery, short cap for the short battery, 18650 or the 18500 battery. They both go in, and the other thing that this scope is really good, and as somebody has thought about this, out in the winter time when you've got a thick pair of gloves on and you can't feel which end of that battery is positive, just drop it in. It doesn't matter. The, this scope is not polarity sensitive, so it can go in either way around, either battery. As long as you make sure you've got the right cap for the right battery, everything's dandy. Moving along towards the front end of the scope, you've got your normal focus ring on there. It's a little bit stiff on this because it's a brand new scope, uh, but you expect that. Personally, if this was my scope, I'd put one of those break-off uh, fishing rod coasters on there just to ease, make that easier to get hold of and also find it in the dark. Normal sort of flip cap on the front there, and on this one I've moved it so it opens out to the left-hand side so it gives the right-hand side of the scope free and easy access for my spare hand. So that's that one, that's the 335. The middle model is the 360, I don't have that one. I've got, however, the 660, which is the flagship model, and really interesting, it's got some really sneaky features on it. So let's take this, the 660, and we'll go over to a very historic uh, hilltop close to where I live. See you there. Hello guys and welcome back. Well, I'm here now at uh, the highest point uh, close to where I live. Uh, we're in Buckinghamshire and the farm, which is over to my left over there. Just a normal farm. It's uh, nothing special, but in 1963, that farm's name was in the headlines of every single newspaper. That farm was used as the hideout for the notorious great train robbers back in 1963. Now they robbed a train about 40 miles away from here, a place called Sears Crossing, which is in Bedfordshire, and drove back here in army trucks, knowing full well that about five miles away over there towards the north of me is an army camp. So that was their cover, dressed as soldiers. Well, Leather Slade Farm is still there, although it's not the original buildings. That was long 
demolished um, just to stop onlookers coming up and sightseers. So we're here anyway, behind me, uh, the hill on the top there with the trees that you might just be able to see is 375 yards away. Uh, I came here the other evening and there was a few roe deer out there. So coming back here now, hopefully we'll be able to put the uh, both areas scopes to good use and just check the functions out and get an idea just how good they are. So it's a nice clear evening. Uh, we had had some April showers earlier. It's about eight degrees. It's getting a bit chilly. We can only hope that the animals will come out and play. So uh, I'll see you a bit later on when it gets dark. Right, right up in the distance, that is 375 yards away, right on the top of that peak is a roe deer. It's been there for quite a while. This is on the 20mm lens. You can see that in the bottom of the display. I'm just going to whack that across now to the 60mm. There you go. It's actually a buck. You can see his horns on the top of his head. And I haven't adjusted the focus yet, so I'll just sharpen that up a bit. There we go. Something sat next to it. It's a rabbit or something there. But impressive bit of technology that is. An idea if you want to shoot rabbits, short range rabbits, and out to a long range fox. Well, that's that rove that we've seen. He's just popped his head out around the corner um, of that bush. Uh, quite clearly see it. I think if that's the one that I saw the other night, it is a buck. Uh, he was right on the top of that ridge um, the other evening though, so he's quite happily sat there having a scratch by the looks of it. So at the moment, I've got the picture in picture on. And if you look down the bottom of the screen, uh, the picture in picture is on a two times magnification. I'm on a Rifle Zero Profile A, I'm on the 60mm lens, the microphone's on, the Wi-Fi is turned off and the rangefinder is currently turned off, battery condition and the current time. So nicely down at the bottom of the picture and not in the way. What I'm going to do now is go through the menu so you can see uh, what the menu looks like. I'm just going to turn the picture and picture off and by doing that I just double press on the rear right button also does the camera that's a picture and what it does it puts the main picture to the zoom that the picture in picture previously was so two times zoom now i can wind that back wind it up let's go back to there we are base magnification on the 60 mm lens so now by pressing and holding the menu button on the left hand side there we go, so let's get to the top of the menu, so top of the shop, your colour, so you've got your white, uh, I'll go through that, it's easy to go through it um, separately, so your colour, your brightness, your contrast, your sharpness, which is quite nice, if, you're gonna, if you get a bit of a noisy picture you can sharpen it up, denoise is obviously what I've just said, if you get um, a lot of interference on the image you can sort that out just to alter the settings on there, zero profile, I'm actually on A, picture in picture, reticle, there's loads of different types of reticles, let's just have a look, go through those shall we, that's number six, number five, nice little cross, quite like those, and that's almost back to the sort of reticle you'll find on a hawk scope. Now press and hold that. Let's go down to let's go back to that. Go back to the colours for a moment. Let's go down to green. So that's talking about the dot in the centre of that target. So we can go change it to red blue back to let's go back to green prefer that 
first focal plane, second focal plane is what the FAP stands for, so that's pretty self-explanatory. We'll back out of that. Zero in, well this is already zeroed. Um, there is an auto zero function on there. Um, I did try it the other night, but it's really warm and I think that was a problem why it wouldn't work. But I have spoken to both the importers and they said they'd been out with the demo gun and it worked perfectly fine. So it's something to try out. Obviously I think when the weather's a bit colder, that would work. You've got your Bluetooth or your Wi-Fi there. Obviously the files, now that's your video files and what this is really good with, you can actually play the video back that you've just taken. So that's quite a handy thing. Uh, especially if you think you've missed something, you can play it back and have a look and see exactly if you did miss it or whereabouts that shot placement went. So Settings are obviously, it's just a bit flicky that. So tracking, that is live tracking. So that will track something which is hot just go back to that let's turn it on so you'll notice now there's a blue box up in the top there and obviously the Sun has just gone down that tree is still quite warm so that's why that is picked up that hot spot of that tree there's not enough hot heat from the deer which is over there it's just seen it now look so that's just picking up on there that's only a head there that we can see so that's what the tracking is it will show you what's moving around so let's just turn it off again obviously the microphones on on-screen recordings on and you can also have the recoil activate activated video as well on there the zoom I've got it set to rapid so it goes up in large increments rather than lots of small increments and you're spending all night winding the zoom in and out so that's basically all that is, the system. Let's just go back out of that. So the menu is a bit intuitive. It takes you a while just to get used to it. So if it's white, it doesn't do anything. So obviously time and date, um, language reset, if you want to just um, dump all the memory on it and go back to the standard factory settings. And the update is if there is any firmware updates online you download that firmware update onto the memory card or the scope as it is seen as a memory card on your laptop and then just press update and it will automatically load that up there turning the scope on and off as it does it so that's pretty much the menu I'll just turn it off again now so all the buttons are controlled obviously um, at the rear so you've got your camera on and off uh, your picture in picture and your color palette so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to shut the cover up and do a manual refresh of that screen because it started to look a little bit cloudy on the left hand side so shut the cover up two quick presses on the left hand button please close the lens cover I have done so I'm now going to press OK Calibration finished, open up the lens again and we're back on. So our friend is still there. I'm not sure if that's something we've got coming out there. He's obviously a little bit shy and he's not going to come out to play for a bit. So I'll put that back on the picture in picture. And again, the zoom on the picture in picture is the only thing that zooms in which is quite nice uh, you still get to see what I refer to as the rest of the world especially if you're taking shots on rabbits and rats that's quite important uh, so we'll just keep an eye on him if he does come out on a bit more I'll come back onto the scope and probably film him on the 335 next right so we're now on with the smaller unit the 335 we're still looking at that munt jack on top of the hill um, I've got the picture and picture on and we're currently on black hot so let's just have a flick through see what the colours are like so there's a nice red there a green again there's the other month jack coming back into play the pink white hot again let's go back to black hot actually the white hot shows that month better in that bush line so 
But remember, he's he's up to 300 yards away. That fella now on the outskirts. So quite a decent picture. Um, ideal for sort of again close up rabbiting, foxing. Um, we can zoom that picture in, picture in, simply by just rotating the cuff on the side just as they decided to clear off. That's handy, isn't it? I've got the zoom on that picture in picture set to the slow increments uh, rather than going up in uh, large increments. It's on sort of 4.5. Yeah, that's something you can quite easily swap around. Again, the menu on this one is exactly the same as the other one. Brightness, contrast, sharpness, denoise, zero profile array, picture in picture. You can turn it off. Type of reticle. Stick with a cross, I think. Brightness, let's see what we do with the brightness. Let's get that really nice and bright. So, one to four on the brightness, one to five color. Blue, red, white, black, red again, green. Let's go with that one. Zero in, we've done Wi Fi and Bluetooth. Files are exactly the same. Settings, tracking off, microphone on, record on. So let's go back to that. So let's go down to. There we go. So we can change now the colour of the screen. This is the main screen I'm looking at now. Blue. Oh, that's me flipping it around. Grey, which is the standard one really. Purple, blue, grey. That's it. And all off. Let's just wind up right back to zero. So there we go. So quite a nice piece of kit. What I'll do now is I'll bring that down to about 100 yards away. Let's just get down and see if we've got anything creeping around the hedge down here. Nothing there. I'll climb around there again. Let's imagine our rows have gone well and truly up there. Right, so I'm back on now with the 336. I've got a nice rabbit stood up there quite nicely. And obviously the yellow isn't probably the best of colours to have on that reticle, so we'll just change that. Let's go down to the yellow, see what options we've got. I think black will probably For red, I think. Let's go up to type. Get a different type on there. Let's make with a few mill dots on it. I don't see that. That's like a hawk scope mount. Let's do the brightness. It's a little bit sharp. focus. I did say earlier on about the zoom coming up in small increments. I can't seem to find anywhere on there where it doesn't go up in large numbers. It's all small increments. So 
again I would think something for doing this sort of thing close up rabbiting and put the picture and picture on it let's get the picture and picture on that's quite interesting so you can do the brightness sort of that less about that without going into the main menu brightness and contrast main menu let's go down to picture and picture all the way down So that's the 336. I think it's quite a handy little bit of kit, the ideal for air rifle shooting, close up stuff, and I think obviously sort of out to a hundred yard fox would be quite um, adequate for that sort of thing um, on a budget of around two thousand pounds. Well, thanks for watching guys. It's not the easiest job in the world to go out and review two new bits of equipment and also talk about them, operate them all at the same time. So apologize if it came across as being a bit amateurish. Uh, it's probably the first time I've had to do something like this for real. Um, however, this scope, the 660, is something else. It's uh, leading edge technology with that twin lens system. These scopes are going to be at the stalking show next week, so pop along and see Phil and Cliff, the two brothers from Thermtech. Tell them you've seen this video and you're interested in the Aries range of 660, and they'll stick one in your hand and you can go and have a look through it. I'm hoping in the next few days to take this, either on the 243 or on my 22 Rimfire, to go and visit a farmer that phoned me this morning. He was telling me that his wife yesterday had a very nice collection of rare chickens. This morning she woke up and all she's got now is a collection of rare chicken feathers and no meat in the middle. Our friend the Red Fox has been there and had the blooming lot so we'll try and get over in the week, get some footage on there for you to see in the next video. So in the meantime, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again. Cheerio. Please remember to click on that subscribe and a notification bell if you enjoyed the content. In the meantime, I'm off to go and try and find a hiding place for some train robbers. Where am I going to start looking for one of those? See you later.